And gosh, hello everybody and welcome to the TGIF Business Networking Blab. I'm your host, Melani McDonald, and I am a brand identity and outreach strategy consultant. I have some wonderful guests with me here today and we'll be getting even more guests coming in too because that is the nature of Blab. But let's give everybody a chance to introduce themselves. First, to my right on the screen, at least as I'm seeing it, is Roxanne Davenport. Roxanne, please introduce yourself. Hello. Again, I'm Roxanne Davenport. Came over from Google+. Plus. I would have on the bottom, lower third, seizure the day. Um, I blog. That's my site. I bring awareness to epilepsy because I have epilepsy. I just want everybody to know that I live with it and want everyone to know more about it. Thanks, Roxanne. And um, next, we'll let Pamela introduce herself. Pamela, hi. Hello, I'm Pamela Zeman, and I'm a creativity and confidence catalyst. I help people with live streaming video to get confident and creative with that, and also making videos. And I also do some work with um, people with arthritis, sore joints. Eat differently so that you don't have to get old before your time. And you changed your focus a little bit, Pamela, yes. since the last time we, well, we hung out on Hangouts. That's true. It's like I was being pigeonholed into just food. And I love to create food and everything, but I'm so much more than that. So it's like you can be creative in the kitchen. You can be creative on video. And I've been doing communication skills for so long. It's like I didn't want to chop that off my my repertoire. Well, that's awesome. I'm so glad that you came on and shared that because you know what? I didn't know. I thought you were like Pamela, the awesome healthy food lady. Like you said, it was you were you had that reputation, and that's what was happening, and that's how I knew you. So well, I did that just to learn how to feed myself and feel better in my body. But I've been doing communication skills for God, 15 years internationally, speaking to groups of people, awesome. and creating video and helping people get their message out live, you know, and look good on camera, which a lot of people with a really great message are a little bit intimidated. And so I help them get over that so they can share what they have to share with the world. That's awesome. Well, I'm so glad that you came in today to check out my blab. <laughs> yeah, yeah, looking forward to it. Thanks. Thanks for hosting. You're welcome. And uh, Michael, back to you. Now's hey. your, your real run. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. I'm Michael Neal. I am from the Pittsburgh area, and I am somewhat of a serial entrepreneur, both online and off. Uh, I have a very successful brick and mortar business, and I'm involved in the funeral service industry. But uh, I've been a uh, domain name investor since 1998. And I have a very large portfolio of domains and websites that I market online as well. Wow. So you're you're a man of many interests and skills. Uh, somewhat crazy, yes. That's that's awesome. Crazy. Now that's interesting that you you use the term crazy. Why why do you use the term crazy? How do you go about juggling so many different hats and still making time to do each of them effectively? Well, that's that's quite a challenge. I can tell you that uh, always something is suffering. Uh, but I have my brick and mortar business, which is the, the most serious for me. Uh, I have a, a wonderful staff of full time employees and part time employees that can manage things in my absence uh, without any problem at all. So I can take a few hours here and there. And I have some VAs overseas and I recently hired uh, a designer programmer in Canada. So I've got a lot of key helpers, players, and a lot I'm of learning, support. Yeah, I'm learning to uh, exploit my strengths and uh, farm out my weaknesses. Great, great. Thank you for that kind of advice. And when you, if you don't mind me asking you, putting you on the on the spot a little, but it's kind of interesting. How do you? go about finding, especially when you're outsourcing to someone overseas, how do you kind of sort of vet them so that you know that they're going to be a good fit? I was fortunate uh, dealing with uh, outsourcers in the Philippines where a friend of mine who is 
local to me, 45 minutes from here, owns an outsourcing firm in the Philippines where he has three physical offices and a couple of hundred full-time employees. So I hire him to provide me with my outsourcers. He governs them. He manages them. I pay him. He pays them. So I have accountability 45 minutes from here. If I have a problem, I can drive to his house. <laughs> that's awesome. That's that's a great way to do it. And it takes a lot of the pressure off you yourself. And then when you go with a trusted business that you know, since you know the, the fellow who owns it, sure. uh, that adds a little bit of security there, I think. Believe it or not, most of the successful uh, relationships don't discredit Facebook. Uh, I've built a lot of great, uh, very reliable relationships with people on Facebook. So uh, don't discredit the power of that. I will not discredit the power of that. I don't discredit the power of any social medium. And in fact, this is kind of exciting to try out this blab as a new social medium. And one of the things that I've kind of come across a lot in, in the other blabs that I was in on the first day I was in and the second day I was in were that people were comparing blabs to Hangouts and saying, is blab the new Hangout? Is blab going to take away from Hangout? And personally, I don't, I don't believe it is. It's just another item in my marketing toolkit. Because as an example, I'm doing this TGIF business networking blab but after this blab is over, I'll be switching to Hangouts because I do twice a month after my TGFs, I do uh, Blooming, I run a club called the Blooming Business Club. And I do consultant is in sessions for my members where they have a chance to come in and hang out with me. And we brainstorm on whatever it is that they want to work on. And that's gonna be a private thing. It's not recorded, it's not broadcast, it has to remain private, so Hangouts, are a perfect forum for that use. So there's just a lot of different uses for the different tools out there. And I'll ask Roxanne and Pamela how you guys use Blab versus Hangouts. Who wants to go first? <laughs> first. <laughs> um, I still have a community over on Google Plus just for epilepsy, I keep in, uh, up with everybody, and they usually don't like to join with just anybody to talk, so still keep in touch with them over on Google, so that's why I still stay over there and keep up with everybody that hasn't come over here. <laughs> but I love how there's four all to one screen, so you don't have to keep bouncing back and forth to small, you know, whenever on Hangouts, you have the small, big at the bottom, you know, and, and then the bigger ones. So that's better. <laughs> awesome. And forgive me if I seem a little distracted. I am listening to your story about your community and everything, but I'm also typing in chat and answering some I am messages at the same time. So as a host, you have to multitask a lot and you all know that I'm sure because you and are hosts you as well. You do a fabulous job, Melinda. <laughs> I'm always amazed by you. I see everything you're doing behind the scenes and it's really something, you know, oh, be able you. to handle all that. So how I use Blabs differently from Hangouts is um, Hangouts, I, I love. I still love them because they're recorded and they go right to my YouTube channel. You get the Google views from that, which is fantastic. And um, once you learn the technology, um, it's it's pretty slick. You can do private Google Hangouts where you're just recording yourself live if you have a content you want to get out there, or you can invite people in. And I've recorded lots of interviews with people. And, and demo things, you know, the thing with Google Hangouts is you have the full screen. So if I wanted to demo how to do something, you can flip back and forth and you get the big screen, which is nice. Um, and Blab, I'm just diving into, I'm gonna do one later this afternoon and just reach out to people who are starting to feel sore joints. And they're like, what's up with this, man? I used to be young and now I'm feeling like this old person before my time. So. For me, I think Blab will reach out to a lot more people and I'll just put the hashtag out there and see who wants to come in and I can do like avatar interviews with people and find out what their real concern is. Because if I just create a product and I go, okay, 
I would love this, but does everybody else love it? Not necessarily. So I want to find out from everybody out there, what is your issue? What would you like some help with so that we can really connect? That's great. Yeah. Awesome. And Michael, do you have you used Hangouts before before you came into Blab? Are you on Google Plus? Just a couple of times. Never I just never really felt comfortable with it. I'm believe it or not, even though I do a lot of business online, I'm not a very technical person and that's what draws me to Blab. It is so simple. Yeah. Uh, I really appreciate the ease of uh, entry to this platform. I, I think that is definitely a big plus on the side of Blab. Although Google, I think, is recognizing that they need to make things easier. And they have a page now, it's hangouts.google.com, that makes it much more easy for folks who are inexperienced with Google stuff to join in. Because before, I used to have to tell clients, you know, to get them into a, a, a Hangout session, you know, go to Hangout, I, excuse me, go to Google, go to look at the upper right of your page, look at your profile icon, look for the little quotation mark, click that, find my name in the list, blah, 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 blah. Oh, it's a nightmare. And then, yeah, and now it's just go to, you know, hangouts.google.com, and then there's just three buttons, phone call, video call, message. So it's made, made it a lot easier for them to, for doing a Hangouts. Now that doesn't apply to Hangouts on air, but for a private Hangout, it's great. Another and, thing I like about Hangouts is the green room where you can, you know, chat with other people ahead of time and say, okay, this is the direction we want to go. And I've noticed on some blabs, unless it's facilitated well, you can have three people talking at once. And for me, I just kind of go like this in my mind. It's like I can't even think. It's not facilitated well. So that's a, that's a really good skill to have on these. That's a great point. And I think it also has to do with the guests. Now, you ladies, I know for sure, are, are veterans because you've been in Hangouts. You've been in my Hangouts. I've been in your Hangouts. And I know that I can feel confident. I don't have to sit there and tell you ahead of time. Now, if you want to talk and you're not getting a chance, raise your hand. But as a host, <laughs> you know, one of the jobs of a good host is to make sure that everybody gets a chance to talk. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if if anybody has something to say and I'm not catching that and there's not a good chance to jump in, do raise your hand, you know, do something on screen, make a face. Let me know. <laughs> we'll make sure we get a chance to talk. Now we've got self-rescuing princess, AKA Karen Price watching us. And she says that she loves that Blab lets her watch live and participate via chat without having to make sure her hair is brushed or the background is clean. <laughs> and she doesn't have to be on the camera unless she wants to be. And I think that's another great point because I think Blab makes it really easy for people to participate in the comments as well. And the comments, the, one of the differences between Blab and Hangouts is the comments that are in the same window as the Blab video feeds are public. Everybody sees them. And it's very easy to send a tweet out, tell that little bird, you know, just click on that, tell that little bird, and it sends a tweet out for you. But on a Hangout interface, when you're inside the Hangout room and where the video feeds are, that chat box to the side is private only to the people inside the hangout room and then you also have to watch your event page for the public comments so it, it makes it a little bit easier because the comments are all kind of consolidated i think in one thing instead of having several different places to watch another good thing though too um like well, on twitter they it's being there for everybody to see that they have something to watch and be replayed because they're stored here they'll know hey i can it's like it's recorded i can go watch it later instead of being here live right so it isn't like periscope where it's just 24 hours do they keep it mm -hmm. recording up forever yeah how do they do that how do they have enough space for all this crazy <laughs> michael hi yeah. Yeah, I, I just uh, I want to exit now, and I appreciate the opportunity to meet you all, and uh, I will lurk in the shadows, and someone else <laughs> okay. may have my seat. <laughs> okay, great. Thanks, Michael. Thanks for joining us. It was awesome to meet you. Be and well. Before you go, let me click on your thing so I can follow you. <laughs>
There we go. Perfect. Done. Perfect. Take care. Everybody give him some props. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Right. Thanks, Michael. <laughs> there is a seat open. And what I'm going to do, everybody, so you know, is I'm going to cycle through on the 15 minute mark. So 9 15, 9 30, 9 45. And oh. if you want to join in, please do leave a message in the comments box because I'm not going to kick anybody else out unless somebody else wants to come in. Right. So um, can I ask you a couple of questions? Sure. About this, how did you get the link? Because when I start one this afternoon, I'm not sure how to start it in advance. Well, what I did was when I, I scheduled it ahead of time, and then it showed up on my Blab page. So it was blab.im forward slash one Meilani. That's my Twitter handle. And you have a Blab page, and the Blabs that you have scheduled will be listed on that Blab page. But it didn't generate the URL for this Blab until I actually started it. But before you start it, it has, you know, this Blab is scheduled, and they put a subscribe button right on it so people can click the subscribe button to get a notification when it starts. So how did you, because I had that link like yesterday. Well, that was, that was to my page, blab.im forward slash one Meilani. Oh, I see. And it was listed there. Okay, got it. But it, it didn't actually generate the URL, the URL that I'm seeing at the top of this page until I started it. Okay, okay. So blab.me forward slash your Twitter handle. Blab.im. I am. Yeah. So go ahead and go on and check that. I think you could just um, click on your name inside the video feed there, and it will bring up your little Blab hover card. Right, um, right. Hi, Michael. Hi, NNRC Miller. And, oh, Nicole Miller. That's Nicole Miller. <laughs> Wabi Sabi. Belfast, ooh, Belfast, that's cool. M D D E I N E R, hello. Dave Espino, unique genius. Gosh, we got yeah. a lot of people following us. So there is an open seat if anybody wants to come in. Well, you've got a great title too, Melani. That makes a huge difference in Blab is to have a, you know, a really good title. That's exactly what it's all about. So many people want to learn about Blab. I, this is still in beta, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wonder when it's going to go out of beta. I know. I think, you know, and apparently I heard in one of the blabs I was in yesterday, somebody said that it's been around since April, but I heard about it the day before yesterday when Roxanne sent okay. me an IM and said, hey, <laughs> I got to show you this cool yeah. thing. Well, I heard I she'd love it. <laughs> Dr. Wilski, man, he's all crazy about blab. <laughs> I'll head out and let somebody in. Okay. okay. I'll call you here. Bye. Bye, Roxanne. And we have Nicole Miller coming in to join us. Hi, lady. Ooh. Hi, Nicole. How are you? Good. Thank you for joining us. Please uh, introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, my name is Nicole Miller, and I am a teacher. And on the side, I work for Plexus health and wellness and I'm just working my way to try and be a stay-at-home mama. Awesome. Well, good luck with that. I hope you are able to do it and do that successfully. <laughs> That's my now, hope. Let me, I'm hoping a year from now I can do that. Okay. Now let me ask Pamela and anybody else out there. For me, I'm seeing Nicole as if she is in a foreign film <laughs> with I'm hearing her voice and okay. then I'm seeing her seeing her lips move. So I'm just wondering if that's just me or if everybody it, else is saying it seemed to come through okay, but if you say something again, Nicole, I'll check it. It it does seem like it's lagging just a little bit. Okay, is that Not better? That it's a big deal. It's fine because we can hear you fine. Yeah. And if your lips move just a little bit later, that's okay. We don't mind. <laughs> I could be in like a foreign it. film then. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to expect you to start doing some karate moves soon. <laughs> yeah. All right, you're making me laugh now. Okay, sorry. I wonder what the difference is. Is it like I'm not hardwired right now? I'm just on Wi-Fi? 
So there must be some difference uh, with Nicole. I think, you know, in my experience in, in Hangouts over the past couple of years, I think it could be anything. <laughs> it could be anything from in her area. There's just a lot of people using it, especially if there's only one service, like where I live, there's only one service. You know, I'm on Time Warner Cable and because th that's what's available, <laughs> Time Warner Cable. And I sometimes get messages from them that say, you know, um, here's the best time of day to be on, <laughs> you know, when nobody else is. But fortunately, I don't have problems all the time, although I, I do have to say in the evening, like after work, it gets a little bit laggier and uh, I, I get blips in my service sometimes. And I wonder if that's because that's when everybody's getting home and jumping online and, yeah. and doing their thing, you know. Yeah. And Brian joined us. Hi, Brian. Are you ready to introduce yourself? Hi. I'm Brian Rowley, mouse help at roselle.com. I help people with their websites, with their computers, with their SEO, social media, whatever you need. If you can do it with a computer, I can help you. Brian Rowley, mouse help at roselle.com. Wow, Brian, that was a really good intro. You must be a Toastmaster or, <laughs> or something. Or something. <laughs> yeah, who knows? I'm the or something. <clears throat> oh, and we joke around because Brian is in my local area. We both live out in the Coachella Valley, California, and we are both Toastmasters in the same club. So we see wow. each other speak every week. <laughs> yes, and we hear every, you know, and um, or so. And we ding them. Now, Brian, let me ask you, because you've joined me on Hangouts and you've now been in a couple of the same blabs I have. What do you find are the, the major differences between blabs and Hangouts? And... I know that you've joined Hangouts, but I've never seen you host one yet. Do you kind of feel the same way about Blabs, or are you thinking about maybe hosting a Blab in the future? I'm far more likely to host a Blab any minute now because I see it as probably better than Skype, let's say, for family. As soon as we, as soon as we get the family members to understand there's some technical things you have to resolve on the way in here, and then I uh, also, I actually thought you were going to ask me for Blab versus Hangouts. And of course, the limitation of four people on the screen is the first thing I would comment on that you have more, you have more people available to see in Hangouts, but they're not all on this. It's kind of like you're, you have more real estate here instead of the, instead of the little, I need to move my hand up, instead of the little, a row at the bottom of the thing with all the people in it. I don't know. I don't know which is which. Which one feels better or is better for the attendees? But so I'm still deciding on that. But but I can tell you, first blush, I'm drawn to this far more than I am to Hangouts, and I'm not sure why yet. And maybe it's because of the the Twitter aspect of it. And Ryan Brown. Brian Brown just chimed in and said he likes this one much better too. And Nicole, Hangouts can be public, but they can also be private. And that's a good question because Brian, you know, you said this versus Skype for family. Do you think your family will feel the same once they know that this is going to be, whoever is watching is watching, it's not going to be a, a private family meeting or chat. It's very, very public. Well, that's the, that's the key is how social are the other members of my family? I suspect the answer is somewhat, not yes, so much sure. like me. So when I invite them to come to this and tell them that this is going to be cool because you're going to see, you know, Tony and me and my two sisters or whoever wants to be in on it, all the, all together, four of us, and we can have this chat, but knowing that you may other people may be privy to it. It'd be interesting to see how that conversation goes, knowing that it isn't private. So my family can be a little body. So maybe it helps keep the family in line. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's a, somebody said something like, never say anything that you couldn't say in front of your grandmother or something like that. And so that's a good that's, one. <laughs> those are good manners. It's really, it's kind of an interesting way of, of being in 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 the view of the public and i was in a blab with a few guys last night where the guy he didn't care he he used the f-bomb as many times as he wanted to and 
He's, he just was himself, completely himself. And you can tell this is just who he is. And, and he feels free to express himself with those types of words. And I thought, it's kind of cool. It's okay. You know, be yourself right. as much as you can, but don't get in trouble. That's. I, I had that experience yesterday in my first test host too, uh, with a 21-year-old who, who his language was a little different. Now we have an interesting conversation going on in the comments box. Wabi Sabi Belfast is saying, Hangouts is very disturbing when, when you make a teensy noise, your face appears on the big screen, <laughs> and that's alarming. <laughs> and that's true because with Hangouts, when you have several people in it, the unless the host is consciously choosing who's showing in the large screen which a good host will do but if they are not doing that then it automatically shows the person that's speaking it detects who's speaking and puts their face on the large screen and so if you accidentally make some noise it will show your face on the large screen and uh karen also known as um, self something princess i'm sorry i forgot she's got initials now srps she agrees that Hangouts make her worry more about having to be on screen at well, any moment. And she uses the mute a lot. Pamela? Yeah, and I'm just wondering if they know that they can turn their visual off, they can turn their camera off. And so yes. they don't want that to happen. And that's the thing, I guess, with Hangouts, you have, it's harder, there's more technology to learn, but you have so many more options. I like the fact that I can go private if I want to. And I like the fact that I can bring different people up larger if I want to. So it just depends how how in depth you want to be. If you just want a quickie, like I like Blab for that, just to jump on and and do some uh, networking. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it is. Going to give up Hangouts? I love Hangouts. Yeah, no, definitely can't give it up because there's just too many tools that they provide that are necessary like screen share privacy um i have a private community pamela i don't know if your community is private but i've got a private community over there and within that private community we can have hangouts that are recorded as a hangout on air but it's recorded but only private within that community yeah. so it can be unlisted or it can be private and that's something that is a a huge thing that I could never give up. <laughs> yeah, and if you're big on, on YouTube, it's automatic. Right. Oh, oh. I'm going to jump out now, Milani. Okay. To meet both of you. Sorry about that. Hang on. I'm going to get my dog out of the room. <laughs> I was the first blab I was in, Nicole. I couldn't figure out how to get my camera working and the host kept throwing sorry. me out so sorry about that don't have mute for the dogs <laughs> I, was, I was just starting to tell nicole how in my first blab the host would see me come in and she'd say uh oh your camera's not working she would just throw me out again well the thing is i saw that <laughs> you don't get the little camera button until you're in the session so i couldn't get to where i could turn it on before she'd throw me off again and i was i'm waving at her i'm, I'm saying read my lips <laughs> right Learning. there was a there was another lady in the in the chat who was reading my lips for her so it was right. kind of fun <laughs> well, you know, and, and it, there is a little bit of a, a learning curve, I think, with anything you start. Uh, what The first Blab that I ever joined, thank goodness, there was, who was it in there? What's his name? Bobby Shadow. A guy named Bobby Shadow was in there, and he helped get me online and get started because I was in there, but my camera wasn't working, and then my camera's working, but my sound wasn't working. And it just ended up being a matter of I had to switch from Safari to Chrome. And then once I got in on Chrome, I had to, I think I had to just leave the page completely and then come back in and then it worked. Needed a minute to, to do something to work. So there is an empty seat. If anybody else wants to come in, please feel free. And uh, I'm just looking in the, in the chat here. So I have a question for all of you because I'm sitting here as a Hangout host, I'm used to saying, oh, so-and-so is saying this and so-and-so is saying that. And in Hangouts, we can actually show comments on the screen. And um, the, the, as I said before, the chat room in a Hangout is private to people within the chat room. So sometimes I read off the chat. But as I was reading off 
some of the comments in the chat here, I realized, well, you know what? The chat's visible to everybody already anyway. So is that just overkill if I'm, uh, if I'm mentioning it on camera because you can already see it in the chat box? So is that overkill or do you still enjoy hearing that from the host or the participants inside the blab? And I'm also going to say, let's give everybody some props who came in. <laughs> and I'm giving you props just for coming in. <laughs> because I think it takes, um, you know, I think it takes a set amount of bravery to allow you yourself to come. Yeah, I think it, I think it takes bravery to, to come out and be on camera and everything. Oh, yeah. I forget sometimes about that thought that people have a little bit of fear of public speaking, don't they? <laughs> that no, was I sort of a, a, a flash from Pamela. She came in and she left. <laughs> oh, Karen, self-rescuing princess society is going to come in. And Nicole, what? Well, I was going to say someone said nice to get a mention and have the question acknowledged. And I agree that when you address it, it's showing that you care about the people who aren't on the screen and that their input and their thoughts are valuable. Great. <laughs> Good. Good to hear. Because I was wondering if I was being, um, what's her name in that movie, Galaxy Quest, where she was just repeating the computer. <laughs> I have one job. Right. I'm going to do it, damn it. I repeat the computer. Oh, oh. I knew Karen would know that one. <laughs> yeah, I'm a geek. Uh, so this is my first time being on camera so i'm curious it got really quiet all of a sudden have you guys noticed that or is it just um, some setting on my computer i i didn't notice i don't know i think maybe maybe it's because i took my dog out of the room <laughs> <laughs> i have a, I, I have an answer for that i was seeing similar things depending on whether i had joined or not that i was getting a difference in my volume is that what you mean yeah it got yeah. really uh everybody's voice went down about 10 percent so I think that what happens, and this is probably, it's just a guess, a scientific, uh, you know, what do they call it? Sophisticated, wild ass guess, guess that, that there's some, <laughs> that there's some attenuation that happens as soon as you join. If you're just listening and you haven't joined, it's louder. And as soon as you press the join button, it quiets down a little bit. And I think that's because in case you come in, they don't want you to be blasting the room. So there's probably ah. some, some limiter on the approach they've taken to make sure that you don't come in blasting your mic with everybody's ears. Nice. That's Melani, a guess. You should be happy to know that my cat just decided to come in here and start meowing just like <laughs> randomly <laughs> in sympathy with the dog. Come back, come back. Well, I don't hear her. So <laughs> but cat, cat meows I find are not as ear piercing sometimes as True. the dogs. Yeah. They can be. Karen, why don't you introduce yourself and let us know what you do, you know, for business or for fun, if that's what you prefer. <laughs> My personal passion. I run the blog called Self-Rescuing Princess Society. Um, it's a blog for uh, I'm going to do a lot of the hemming and hawing and umming and stuff. So just live with that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a blog for women and girls who kick ass. So I, basically it's a sort of inspirational, positive stories. Um I follow uh, people from history and people in current events, people who write books, music, TV shows, whatnot. So oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's not making me any money. I'm hoping to fix that. But uh, in the meantime, it's really personally fulfilling. So now how, how does one generate income from blogging? Do you have any ideas on that? Or? I I am doing all the research I can possibly do. I have uh, a Patreon. And I, you know, solicit once every couple of months, just, hey, you know, throw me some money on PayPal. I'm happy to do this. Uh, ads are a, another way to look at it. But um, I think at this point, I'm still just building my followers and having fun doing it and spending a lot of time on social media talking about awesome stuff. So, yes. And Brian said, uh, would you please put your URL to your blog site in the chat room? And I agree. Please please do that so sure that we can thing. all go and check it out and follow it. There you go. I'm going to give you props for that because that sounds like an awesome blog. So I think everybody should fun. Yeah. Yeah. Now, do you use, have you ever used Hangouts as a host? 
No, but one of my Patreon agreements is that if you sponsor me at a certain level, you get to go into a once a month hangout with me. So I need to get on that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So because, because you're going to have to start doing that. Now I wonder, I, yeah. I wonder now that Blab and Periscope and some of these other formats are around, if they would let you switch out one for the other. Oh, I'm sure they would. Just, I think I, I just, I didn't mention hangouts like Google hangouts. I just said, you know, in a monthly virtual online chat. So keep my options open. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I want to take a minute to thank everybody who has sent a tweet out for this blab unique genius and you Karen self rescuing princess society, Pamela, Roxanne, Joe Hart, uh, Elaine, thank you everybody for sending a tweet out. That's really awesome. If you were in here, I'd give you props, but you're not. <laughs> so my props are just verbal at this point. And Nicole, woo, well, I can give you some props. Yay. <laughs> thank you. All right. Networking, hangouts, marketing, and blab. Let's get to the marketing part of this because we've been talking about blab and hangouts and one versus the other and which one do you like better and all of that stuff. So let me ask first the guests who are in the camera seats and then anybody who's watching on and, and chatting with us um, to let us know how and if you are using any video formats in your marketing of your businesses and what is it that you're doing? I'll start because I'm the host and I can. <laughs> and as you can see, I use Hangouts and, Bl and now Blab to market and promote myself as a solopreneur, as a business consultant for marketing and social media outreach and uh, branding strategy. So I have been doing Hangouts for about two or three years now over on Google Plus since before Hangouts on Air were available. And I originally started doing it to open up networking beyond local borders. My experience in my local area is that I live in an area where it, it's a large retirement community. And when I go to the local networking mixers, a lot of the people are older and a lot of the people are not so much about going social and growing their businesses. They're kind of content where they are and they're, if anything, 10 years from now going to be looking at how to close their business and retire, not grow. So I started realizing, well, you know, if I want to find an audience that wants to learn how to do outreach online, I, I should go online where people who want to learn about being online are. And I started using Hangouts to bring a business networking mixer online. And it was instrumental in building my following over on Google Plus. And hopefully, I think Blab is kind of the same with Twitter. I've gotten a lot of followers on Blab and Twitter just in two days from, from participating in Blab. So that's kind of how I use it for marketing. And um, who wants to go next? Raise your hand. Okay, I will choose somebody. Karen, self-rescuing princess. <laughs> uh, so in addition to running this blog, which is my personal passion, I do work in social media. I've worked for different online and uh, physical properties doing, you know, maybe 10 hours a week. Um, and so it's really interesting to try to apply the same tools to completely different uh, audiences and different per, uh, merchandise. So like basically if you're running a, like I used to help a uh, gardening, online gardening app, I mean, it's completely different than running a princess blog, you know, it's right. You know, and so different tools, different, different way the audience interacts with you on different social media. So it's fascinating. I spend a lot of time on everything that's new. When I hear of a new one, I, go and log in and start like figuring out how would this work for who and what and why. So. Right. I, and it's, it is interesting because you're right. It's different audiences for, for different mediums. I have a virtual persona who's my character that I play in one of the virtual worlds and she has a blog and that blog is all about the virtual world. So we're not me, the real me and my virtual person, we're not connected in any way. And with her blog and outreach, it's really big on Flickr because oh. that, that virtual world has a huge audience of people that takes photos and posts them on Flickr and, and has 
a lot of people from that world are on Flickr. So those two work together. And uh, that's interesting. What I like about this is the networking potentials. I I'm all about networking because I'm seeing here in the sidebar in the chat that we're already getting networkings. Um, Brian is going to introduce a client to self-rescuing <laughs> princess and Pamela. I've already opened the link. <laughs> right, yeah. So we're getting networking going on here and that's awesome. Uh, Brian, let's go to you. How are you or are you using video mediums and which video mediums to market your businesses? Uh, the now. Yeah, the only one I'm on is my YouTube channel, and I've only scratched the surface on recording a few videos for people on how to do things. Oh. And <laughs> you'd think that I would get the hint when I had a guy sitting right over, right over there in that office, <laughs> and he, he 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 saw one of my videos on how to how to use snipping tool. I don't know I, who I have, who are Windows users. Oh boy. Okay. So, so oh, okay. <laughs> it's equivalent to, I think, Shift Command 4. So you can capture your screen or any portion of it. And he was working with a guy and he needed some information from his screen. And he read my how to use snipping tool and told the guy how to do it so he could send the information from his screen back to him. And he thought it was the coolest thing in the world. And it was perfect timing, apparently, for what he needed. And I thought, you know, I, got, I need to really record a bunch more of these videos for people who need to know how to do the simplest, simplest in my world, the simplest of things, which is, you know, capture a little square on your screen. Yeah. But that's the only place where I've used video. I really would like to work with someone far more professional at producing videos than me to record a video commercial to say, here are all the things I can do for you. If you need any help, I'm here for you. And would you run that commercial, you know, on cable TV or just something to put up on YouTube and, and post around? I would post it and see what kind of response I get to it. I would definitely have a bunch of people review it before I would use it in any commercial television setting. I would love to think that I could get a video of that quality produced for me because I think it would be very helpful for me. Well, and I, I think, Brian, that you bring something up that we hadn't mentioned yet that's really good, and that is creating those little how-to videos, because I did a lot of those as well uh, over on Google+, Plus. how to find your stuff quickly on Google+, Plus, and how to do this on Google+, Plus, how to do that. And those were really very popular and effective videos, because especially with Google+, Plus, as so many people here on Blab have mentioned there's a little bit more of a learning curve for some of the things there. So those were pretty instrumental as well in helping me build an audience over there on Google+. Now, the, the issue I ran into is that they change things so often that half those videos are kind of outdated now. Things have changed about where, where they need to go to find the things that I was showing them. So uh, that was a good point. And I just want to say hi to Ryan and Vic Boone and Mr. Crazy Ryan. Great, who is Ryan <laughs> and Tracy and Patrick and Brad. Hi, everybody, for joining and watching. And please do let me know if you'd like to come in. I will cycle the seats out again at 945 if anybody else wants to come in. But I'm not going to kick anybody else out unless I know someone wants to come in. Now, Nicole, we didn't hear from you yet on if you're using video for marketing at all so, and what kind, type of video, what mediums. I just started Blab. This is my second Blab. So I'm just kind of using Blab to get to know new people and expand my networks. Um, but as far as video, most of my business is done through Facebook. Um, I have private pages where I train my team and then I have my regular page with my family and friends. And so I use videos to share my testimony about how my life has changed and um, how it impacts my kids. I keep looking to the side because I have a little girl who's two who's passed out on the couch with croup. So I keep just looking at her to make sure she's okay. Um, but I share my testimony mostly to share how the products, because it's a health and wellness product that we take and how it impacts my life daily and and then again on my training page 
I share videos about how to use Facebook to your advantage, how to network with your family and friends, how to um, get the most out of your products and such. That's awesome. And everybody who is telling us about their business and their links, this is a networking blab. So please do leave your links in the chat. Do leave your links in the chat so that any, anybody else can check them out. And Karen, self-rescuing princess, say goodbye. Let us know if you have any promos coming up or anything before you leave. And then we're going to bring Nick in. No promos. I'm working on a lot of uh, really great blog posts. So that's what I'm going to, I'm going to step out. I'm going to keep listening and then start uh, emailing all the people that owe me photos and stuff. So, <laughs> <laughs> so awesome. Thank you so much. It's a lot of fun. I'll see you guys next Friday, I guess. All right. Awesome. Bye. Now, all right. Or Bye, guys. I'm not doing a blab next Friday, but I'm sure somebody is. Mine's the first and third Fridays. All right, Nick, seat is open. Come on in if you like. There he is. And we'll, we're going to give him a minute to load. Hey. And then Nick, please introduce yourself and let us know what you do. So I'm, my name's Nick, obviously. <laughs> but I do uh, business and marketing. I'm actually, I started out as an internet marketer and then have moved a lot into doing my own businesses these days. Awesome. Yeah, that's what I do. So, so I'm mostly in the natural wellness. So a lot of Chinese herbals and tonic herbs, that kind of thing. So I have a question for you. What is the difference between being an internet marketer and being someone who markets your business online using social various social medias? I mean, if you're saying that marketing your business is online is exclusive to social media, then I don't know, maybe it's a little different in that sense, but well, I mean, I mean, marketing your business online, like that is being an internet marketer. Like okay. I'll use, I mean, as far as like platforms, I use Facebook, I use YouTube, I use Amazon is huge these days. If you're selling a product, it's such an easy place to get a start. So well, unfortunately I, I, it's getting a little more crowded. But <laughs> Because I hear people introduce themselves as I'm an internet marketer or describe themselves as an internet marketer. And yet I hear other people are doing a great job of marketing on the internet, but they have a, a business. And I guess this boils down to branding and how do you want to brand yourself? And are you branding your business or are you branding yourself as an internet marketer? So I was, oh, I I was interested saying. in hearing what your view was of What's the difference between being an internet marketer and having a business you're marketing on the internet? Well, <laughs> that's something I have a little beef with is there's plenty of internet marketers that are incapable of creating a market for a product. They're just making money off people and maybe never even make money for the people they work for. So I definitely get that aspect of this business where there's plenty of people out there that they can manage to sell the idea of internet marketing to somebody who doesn't know anything about the internet, but if you ever actually like were able to track what they're doing, you would realize, wow, this is a I mean, dead loss for a lot of businesses. I've a lot of my clients that I've worked with in the past found me because of just failing over and over again. And they're just from references being like, well, wow, this, like go over to this kid. He's made me a little money. You know? <laughs> I think I think when I hear the term internet marketer, I think about all those people that say, you know, sign up for my exactly. five week course and you'll have six figure incomes by the time you're done. And I'm like, really? Selling courses on how to make money that's like you're living, right? Right, yeah. And I, it's yeah. like I make a million dollars a year, like you can do it too. I'm not gonna like fill you in on the fact that the million dollars I'm making is off you. Right. And and to me, that's a big difference than someone who is sitting down with a person and saying, okay, what is your business? Who are your audiences? You know, who are the people that need your services and how can you serve them? And then helping them figure out how they can reach out to them versus, you know, saying, oh, well, do what I do, which is sell internet marketing to other people, <laughs> you know, <laughs> sell yourself as an internet marketer. So. So that's where that line of questioning came from. Now, I'm sorry, remind me again, what is your product and business and service? You help other business owners effectively learn how to market themselves online, is that correct? So one of my things, like what I got to start with doing was just, I was basically helping other people with their businesses, just growing them on the internet, not really, uh, not really like teaching them how to like actually just 
increasing their sales. This is like older businessmen. Like I started out in real estate. So these were older businessmen that had really successful businesses. Like one of the guys I worked with was doing like 600,000 a year and other guys doing like two and a half million a year, but they're doing that exclusively offline. So I was bringing them online, not in the sense of like, I'm just going to build you a website, but bring them online learning like helping them develop an actual market on the internet for their products getting them on amazon getting some of their customers they already had reviewing their products there getting them like setting up email lists retargeting lists on facebook like that kind of all the mumbo jumbo we have to deal with when you're selling stuff online <laughs> just right, building okay. it out for them and managing it and it's kind of, i think it's always kind of nice when you are in a position where you can hire somebody like Nick to do that for you. So you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> Serious, for those yourself. people, it's like a miracle. Like yeah. they didn't want to learn it. They didn't want to touch it. They didn't, all they wanted to know is like, what's the bottom line? Like how much am I paying you and how much right. can you claim responsibility for? So, Nick, <laughs> let me ask you this then. And, and what advice do you have for people who are solopreneurs Mm -hmm. who are starting out maybe don't have that kind of budget to be able to hire somebody else to do it for them right away but they want to start getting themselves online what advice do you have for them yeah i mean honestly if you're a solopreneur and you have a budget like if your budget's under like a few hundred thousand a year i'd never hire someone i would either do your business in an area that you understand or like yeah just don't hire someone like or learn what you need to learn to achieve your goals because hiring like for me for my clients i was able to be successful with them because increasing their bottom line by five percent ten percent was more than enough to cover my salary but when you're talking about a solopreneur like hiring like hi signing up for training courses that you're paying for like all that information is out there for free like just hiring people like I would say 95% of the people in the internet marketing world don't even their, their job is to sell marketing, but not actually to sell your product. Like right. They spend their time trying to get clients. Right, so right. you're not going to have a very good luck hiring people. I have plenty of friends that have gone through 25, $30,000 and gotten zero back just from Ooh, their, just from going through one person after another that was able to sell their service, but not follow through. Right. So when you wow. start out from zero marketing online, like the big bottom line, like the first thing you have to do is you have to have a website and not just like put a flyer up for your business, but like understand that your website is there to have a conversation with a person without you having to pick up the phone and talk to them or go to them in person and talk with them. Like understand that your website is a conversation that they're having that they interact with. That's why I use a lot of video is because you can have that conversation, visual, audio, dialogue with a new customer that will lead them to being either talking to you in person if you're business to business or if you're dealing with business to customer, it's the interaction they need to make a purchase that another brand's not giving them. That is great. And I am tweeting out a little golden nugget from you, Nick, which was, your website is there to have a conversation before you ever meet. Mm -hmm. If I can fit that. Oh, it's one character too long. <laughs> so I'll take out ever before you meet. And like, again, we're solopreneurs, like a lot of the, like if you go like HubSpot's one of the big voices in the online marketing community, and they'll tell you, you just have to blog every day, every week. You have to be posting stuff up on Facebook all the time. That's awesome if you have a team of people to do that for you. If you've got yeah. like 10 people working for you and you're in charge of making the pictures, you're in charge of writing stuff, you're in right. charge of posting it. When you're alone, you're not gonna have time to do that. Like I, right. with my own business, I don't have time to do all that stuff. I, right. You're not gonna find my business on Facebook. I'm like anti-Facebook with my business because it's not, I don't have the time to post up regularly enough to have the right. internet there. So yeah, what I actually I have to do, agree with you there. build in, uh, I build a sales funnel, essentially. I think, what is the steps that this customer needs to take? What is it they need to know before they buy? And I create a static system that will get, it's not going to convert as well as if it was live, but it at least is going to give everybody all the information they need to make a decision. Right. And 
I don't need to change it every week. Like I'll make that very in depth. I'll have 12 videos. I'll have tons of articles and I'll just make it so that they can click from one article to another, learn everything they need to know. Right. And, and to get to the end point of making that decision to go ahead and feel comfortable, comfortable enough to buy. Yeah. Brian, he, he just put, where do I post those golden nuggets? I, I clicked on the tell the little bird button over on the left there and it auto generates a tweet for you. So I just changed the tweet that it auto generated before I posted it. So it says the auto generated tweet is TGIF business networking, blab, blab, hangouts, marketing and networking with, and then it lists who's in here. And uh, I just took out all the rest of that and put in what you see in the tweet that I put out. So and this I mean, question I love here from Rizel. Rauzo, I don't know how to pronounce his name, but have you put that statement on a site? I don't actually sell marketing. I do it because of proximity. Like I've only ever done marketing for people because I was doing my own businesses online and people said, hey, you need to talk to this kid. I have an, I don't have a website where I sell my services and I'm actually not trying to get clients right now. So if you need somebody like don't talk to me. I'm way too busy. <laughs> <laughs> On that me. note, I'm looking for new work. But the real question, I guess, maybe a better question is, do you want to be mentioned as the source of that quote? Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. You know, cool? I, I tried to price. mention him as a source of that quote, but I made a typo. And instead of putting by at Nick Eberly, I put BU at Nick Eberly. <laughs> boo. <laughs> boo at Nick Eberly. So we'll we'll correct that after. But uh, TGIF is over at 10 a.m., folks. Sorry, I know that some blabs will last all day long, but uh, this one is an hour, and afterwards I have to make myself available to the members of my club. So awesome. I would like to ask our guests who are on video to please let us know if you have any last final thoughts for this episode of the TGIF N Business Networking Blab or any specials or promos that you want to promote upcoming. Brian, we'll start with you. Oh, sorry, I wasn't ready. Why don't we start with someone else? Okay, we'll see. start with Nick. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really have any last statements. So I just thanks for having me on. It was fun hanging out with you guys, and thanks for letting me share some thoughts. Oh, thank you for coming on. You had some great thoughts to share. Golden nuggets everywhere. Loving that. <laughs> okay, are you ready now, Brian? I am. So if you'll give me a briefer version of that same question, I'll answer it. Succinctly. Any last thoughts on today's episode of TGIF and any promos that you want to put out before we end the show? Well, I think that this is so different. And I actually posted the one other difference I thought of. It takes a little more technical savvy and dedication to get into Google Hangouts on air versus this, which was like, you're in. If you're on Twitter, you're basically in. It's so easy. It's just ridiculous once you get your settings set. And the other thing is I'm trying to transition my business from less of the going out and running around and setting up people's computers and fixing things and making their networks better to more of the staying here in my office and helping people understand how things like Pinterest and Blab and Twitter and Facebook can help get more eyeballs on your website ostensibly to gain more business or prospects for you. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you, everybody who joined me on camera today. That was very brave of you. Roxanne, Nicole, Princess, Karen, Brian, Nick, Pamela. Did I miss anybody? Sorry if I missed anybody. Uh, thank you for coming in. And thank you, everybody who joined us in the comments today. This is the TGIF Business Networking Blab. I host the TGIF Business Networking Mixer online. Every first and third Friday, it's been on Hangouts generally in the past three years. Uh, although I will be switching to Blab for a lot more of them. Not every single one, because the next one is on September 18th. That's Friday, September 18th at 9 a.m. That one's going to have to be a Hangout because uh, I've got some screen sharing that I'm going to need to be doing. And the people that I'm interviewing are virtual people from virtual worlds. They don't want to come on camera with their real faces. And on Google Hangouts, we can just put their profile icon, which is a picture of their pro of their virtual person, their character from these virtual worlds. So we're going to be talking about doing real business in virtual worlds. 
and are they income generating and are they just out of passion what is it so that's going to be a hangout you can follow me over on google plus just do a search for my name melani mcdonald and you'll see it there bye everybody have a great day thank you